Hello there and welcome back to another episode of completely useless videos on the internet. And today's episode is how I develop my film. A couple of you guys asked me about how I develop my film, so I decided to make a video tutorial how I develop my film. So I got everything in this beautiful box and I think we can start. Oh no, no we cannot. You know guys, I really want to send you this little film camera, so if we manage to get 200 likes on this video, I think that would be enough. And I will send this tiny camera to you, to one of you, I mean. So yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. Sub subscribe. <laughs> All right, anyway. Let's go. Ugh. Ugh. I'm too old, I'm too old. All right, so the first thing first, let me show you what is inside of the box. And here we have a funnel, a very helpful thing if you don't want to have chemicals all around your room. Measuring cup, I recommend to have at least one liter. It would be the perfect size for you. Then we have Patterson film developing tank or kit. And you will need this one in particular if you want to develop your film at home. Uh, and you can buy it anywhere, but it should be Patterson film development tank or kit. In this kit, you will have a cap to close it tight. Then you have this spinning thing. I don't know what's the name of it, but you will need it to spin your film inside of the tank. I will show you later, but it looks like that. Then you have another cap, which is also a funnel and it protects your film from any kind of the light. And again, it helps you with pouring the chemicals. Also, there is a film keeper. You will roll your film into this and it will prevent your film from sticking together. You actually will have two of them, but I use only one. And the chemicals. My chemicals are ready to be used because I've already developed eight rolls of film with these chemicals and I can make a video about how to mix the chemicals if you need, so let me know in the comments. And this is my scoop for mixing the chemicals, I just store it in the same box. And this is a sous vide and it helps you to make the right temperature of your water and your chemicals for the developing process. And the last but not the least, dark bag. You will need it to transfer your film to the Patterson tank without getting any light on the film. I don't think it has any particular brand on it. You may find it on Amazon. All right, so that is what we're going to use in our film developing process today. Yeah, and don't forget about the camera. 200 likes. Okay, the first step is film retrieving and transferring it to the Patterson tank. I have my fresh film from Amia, so I'm going to develop this one today with you guys. I have to mention that the process of film retrieving is quite different between 35 and 120 film, but the other steps are absolutely the same. 120 is a bit harder in my opinion because you need to do everything inside of the dark bag and you obviously can't see a thing, so it takes some time to get used to it. Anyway, here we are, 120 film, it's Portra 400. And I just made a terrible mistake. I made too much noise and we might have some serious problems. Because now we have to explain and present all the necessary documentation that we have the rights to film here and do what we're doing. But anyway, looks like we are good to keep working and let's transfer all the necessary items inside of the dark bag. And the first item will be a roll of film. Then the film keeper, this little trunk. Normally I ask my cat to help me inside of the dark bag but today I'm going to prove you that I can do it alone, so no cats inside of the dark bag today. Then we also need a cap from the Patterson tank and the Patterson tank itself. As you can see, we are doing all the work under supervision, so you can be sure that we are doing great and it as it should be. It takes some time to transfer the film inside of the Patterson tank and sometimes it takes less, sometimes it takes more time. My personal record was around 30 seconds, but today was my anti-record. Anyway, finally I managed to transfer the film and we are ready to open the dark bag. Be sure to close tight the cap of the Patterson tank to prevent any light getting onto your film. All right, so the next step is heating our water and chemicals. And I use the water just from a tap. Also, I can recommend you to develop film in the kitchen or in the bathroom. And normally I do it in the bathroom, but it's way too small to fit my camera with the tripod. So I decided to do it in the kitchen this time. I set the sous vide at 38 degrees because it is what is set on the chemicals and just wait for the water and chemicals to heat. 
Normally I do it before I start transferring the film and it's already heated right when I finish transferring but today I'm filming all the process so no fast tracks today. Once it is heated to 39 degrees we are ready to start developing. 39 degrees Celsius. Don't forget to glow up because we are dealing with chemicals and no one wants to get some burns on the skin, right? So now take the measure cup and pour 700 milliliters of water inside of the Patterson tank and the water should be 39 degrees Celsius. Set the timer for one minute and just wait. At this point there is no need to make any extra moves. Just wait and dump this water in the sink after one minute. The next step is to pour your chemicals from the first bottle inside of the Patterson tank and set the timer for 3 minutes and 30 seconds. You need to spin it for the first 10 seconds and then make 4 inversion cycles every 30 seconds. Make sure you close tight the cap of the Patterson tank. Inversion cycle is basically to turn the tank upside down and hold it just for a second and go back. And you need to repeat it 4 times every 30 seconds. Once you've done it for 3 minutes and 30 seconds, dump your chemicals back to the bottle. Cover the bottle with a cap but do not close it yet because it may have some foam which may make your chemicals live less than they could. I change my chemicals every 3 or 4 months but in this case chemicals should be stored in the dark place, not too cold and not too warm and the caps should be closed tight with no air inside. Alright, so once you dump the chemicals back to the first bottle, you need to pour the chemicals from the second bottle. And this time set the timer for 8 minutes. Once again spin it for the first 10 seconds and make 4 inversion cycles every 30 seconds. Once you've done it, dump the water back to the bottle and close the caps. The last step is to rinse your film in the water and it should be not cold and not hot, just a warm water. At this point your film is no longer light sensitive so you can open the tank. Normally I rinse it 7 times and some people also add photo flow which helps to avoid those water drops on the film and makes the film crispy. But I don't have it so I just rinse it in the warm water and hang it to dry. I give it 4-5 hours to dry and after it it's ready to be scanned. Alright so that was it. Hopefully this video will help you somehow and do not forget about this camera, 200 likes and I will send it to you. That's it, bye.